Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm your host, Dr. Nasser, and what's on tap for today again, folks? Well, it's our continuing reaction video series to the debate between Douglas Murray from the United Kingdom, conservative author, and Flavia Kleiner from Switzerland, socialist, Marxist, leftist. And this debate was sponsored by the Forum on European Culture, and it was a huge, it was a pretty long debate. We spliced it and diced it and put it into parts. This is part six of the debate between Douglas Murray and Flavia Kleiner. Let's get to it right now. Make some space for Flavia to, to respond to what you've just said. Flavia. What is important to me is how I see these institutions, which is precisely that they are kind of the essence of values which we share here in Europe, uh, which, you know, have been um, consolidated in these institutions. Mm -hmm. And that's why I also think they are so strong and they're so relevant and we should refer to them and see them as this set of values. They still are, but now found in um, rule of law and, and the setup of laws. Um, so that's what I think is so important about this uh, whole idea of institutions because it's precisely nothing that is uh, politicized that much. The only experience I made, also in Switzerland practically, is that the right-wing populists, they really attack these institutions. Can you give examples? Can I your give yeah. To make it a bit more concrete, maybe, yeah. for Douglas? So, for, yeah. exa for example, there was this one law, uh, the right-wing populists wanted to expel criminal foreigners for even minor offenses of law, like driving mm. two times too fast within 10 years, which can happen to anybody uh, living in a country, right? So uh, the writing populists, they wanted to also exclude any clause of personal hardship. So for example, and you must know in Switzerland, 25% of the inhabitants of the country, uh, they don't have a Swiss passport, mm -hmm. but most of them, they have lived in the second or third generation in our country. So they don't really, really have any ties to where they have their nationality from, but still they would have been expelled out of the country for even minor infrictions of law. So um, we said we don't want this to happen, that's just arbitrary. Any, anybody could be expelled uh, for these uh, infrictions of law. So we said at the, we need to give the right to a judge this space of just the principle of proportionality to look at the individual case and say, hey, this person has a family here, he has a wife, he has to pay for this family, we cannot just expel him out of the country. Um, and this would no longer have been possible if the law of the writing populace was accepted. So we just made this really, really simple case by saying we don't want to be in such um, a country. And I that, was, um, that was very successful. Douglas, yes, you have the word. Very quickly, by the way, I was very interested just before coming and joining you, albeit then to be insulted for not joining you by Flavia, uh, uh, that um, uh, I just noticed on the way in that there'd just been a, there was a fatal stabbing, as I'm sure you know, Flavia, in Switzerland last Saturday. And the man who just confessed said he did so in the name of, according to Swiss uh, Public Radio, this isn't uh, according to some weird, anti, uh, weird populist movement, but Swiss Public Radio just said before we came on that he's just, uh, that he is a Turkish Swiss dual national and that he'd been re released from prison in July before murdering somebody in Switzerland last weekend, uh, and that actually he'd been on their radar since 2017. Why, why don't you, when you mention things like you just mentioned, concede that there are some serious concerns that people have, such as, for instance, somebody being stabbed to death last Saturday, and that your, pre your presentation of all such concerns as merely being yet more of these right-wing populist concerns. Actually, this might be people who are anti-stabbing, for instance, and, and, and you remain totally incapable of giving an answer to such people. But the real problem is this. You were asked a very specific question. Then you went on a ramble about a specific Swiss thing. Uh, that wasn't the question you were asked. You were asked to provide some meat to the question of what you're talking about when you're talking endlessly about institutions. Which institutions are you talking about, you were asked, and you didn't answer. You started talking about a Swiss campaign. I come back to it. What are the institutions, and are all institutions, once they're created, endlessly virtuous, or is there ever a time, in your view, that an institution can go bad? And that it's quite right to point out that it's gone bad, for instance, when it becomes tyrannical or anti-democratic. Flavia. So. Wow, wow, wow. Did he just go there and crush? And like you said, it's, oh, you know what? 
<laughs> they were going to pass a law in Switzerland that if you drove over the speed limit twice in 10 years, we're going to deport you. That's in, and we fought back and we get, look, everybody understands. We've, everybody's got feelings. Everybody has got, most people have got mercy in their hearts. Most people want justice. And like you said, because 25% of the population, why is it that, why in Switzerland, why 25% of the population, I didn't know this, this is news to me, they're second, third generation and they don't have a Swiss passport? Why is that? I, I, I don't know if I heard that thing correctly or not, but you were saying they have no ties to their nationality or whatever, you know, back home. So even if you're born in Switzerland, but you're of a ethnic background, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not sure what she's saying in time is, but you know, that's a whole nother point. The point I want to get back to now is the fact what you know, Douglas says you were asked about institutions. What institutions are there are there that you think are bad or you think that are being taken over by populist nationalist movements? And then he basically asks her point blank, Flavia. Are you basically saying that all institutions are completely good if they're only on the left, if they're only Marxist, if they're only socialist, and that's perfectly fine? Give an institution that if it's gone, is there a way that you can change an institution or get rid of them? Let's see her answer. All I say is what should be at the center of a political order and the interest is to me the individual freedom. Before you called yourself a liberal, as I understood you right, um, and I don't, I don't call myself anything. I'm not okay. going to have you call me whatever you want, so awesome. you can go ahead. Flavia, I called you a populist. Would you agree? No, I mean, it just shows how um, very unaware world. she is of almost anything, as far as I can tell. Perhaps this is I why there's, no, there's, the, there's, no, there's no body of work that Flavia has produced, clearly, because she doesn't do her yes, research. That point I don't think I've ever been made. reasonably described as a populist. Sorry. I um, and, I, and I would add one other thing, which is that I don't... Uh, use the term myself because I think it's a, a term used by people who are flabby in their thinking, like Flavia, and simply set up terms in order to it's then shoot the down mythical beasts. Douglas, sorry, uh, we will give Flavia another opportunity to sorry, finish the point. Yes, yes, of course. I think it's that we have. Our Good. I think both. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your contribution. I think we have a situation where both speakers feel insulted by each other. And let's see if we can get any further than that. Um, as a moderator, um, I would like to give you, Flavia, again the opportunity to, to explain this point of, of the liberal institutions. I understand it so that you say actually they can be your strongest ally if you want to defend liberal values, right? Exactly. Yes. Thank you so much. I just want to come back to the point what was what came what Douglas came up uh, in his first interview round was being uh, afraid of uh, immigration changing European values or European identity and there I would actually argue that as I said at the very beginning uh, of starting here to speak, that in these liberal institutions we find the European values, um, you know, the essence of it, we find it consolidated in these uh, very institutions. And I would say this is basically, that's, that's why I think it's very counterintuitive to me why right-wing populists attack these institutions, which would somehow you know, um, secure um, these European values here on the continent because it's lost, they can be reinforced uh, by states and by uh, individuals. And I would really uh, argue that we should stick and, and, and defend these institutions yes. because they also, you know, help um, people who fear uh, that, for example, Islam or any religion can change the European lifestyle or uh, values here. Uh, that we can refer to these institutions. Right. I, I would like to know a bit more how actually on a concrete level you suggest to do so, to come up with a narrative, because you also um, admitted that it is very difficult for people to make uh, an imagination with, with something as an institution. It's an abstract thing. 
um, they don't actually actually know what they what they stand for is what you said. So how does one show pride in institutions just on a very concrete level? What's the narrative, the moving story yeah. for that matter that politicians should tell when defending institutions? I think one, to you. one point and already would be, again, to start um, explaining why they have been developed, these institutions. It's because it's for a reason, right? It was here to, um, to put the individual at the center of interest or it's, as a goal, the well-being of an individual at the center of our political order. And I am, as a liberal, strongly convinced that this is the right way to go. And I also argue that we shouldn't just stop um, from putting this at the center of our uh, interest or of our political uh, will, um, just because um, some people start to only speak about migration or to start to speak only about national sovereignty, which, to, in my eyes, rather puts an idea of collective sovereignty at the center of interest and not the individual um, freedom at the center of uh, interest. And I think that's a really important distinction because if we look at Brexit, for example, um, I see that this is actually, you know, people are losing jobs, um, they're losing possibilities in their life, families are torn apart. And I don't really see how this is in the interest or well being um, of, of an individual. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really against that idea. I don't see how this claiming the national sovereignty pays off. It's not about the individual anymore. The whole thing about Brexit is that you're being run by what? You're run, you're run, the EU is not an individual. It's a collective. It's being run by people in The Hague. It's being run by people in Amsterdam. It's being run by people, okay, you know, in, in, in European, at one singular place. And they're making the rules and the laws and establish that are overburdening, that are basically, you know, um, it's the collectivization of that entire place and saying that, you know what, we have one entity here, one sovereignty, and that's going to be, you know, in Switzerland or it's going to be in Amsterdam or it's going to be in Brussels. And from there, we're going to make the laws, we're going to make the policies, and we're going to drop them down on you. And then if, and that's an institution. Brussels is an institution. Amsterdam is an institution. These are all institutions, all political institutions. And yet, she's talking about the individual. Well, the individual is being affected by the institutions at the top that are making these policies and dripping them down. And sometimes it's not just a, it's the drip, drip, drip. And sometimes it's an avalanche. And sometimes it's a freaking tsunami that's coming after people. For people. Let's, let's put yeah. that question to Douglas, right? Yeah. Uh, he is from the UK, um, so he, he'll know. Um, Flavio stated on Brexit, if I, if I paraphrase, if sovereignty... So it looks like they're going to go into Brexit, so I'm going to stop it here and we'll do that for the next section. But I basically have said uh, what I want is that she is just literally talking in, in, in terms of the individual and liberalism and the institutions, but yet everything about... Europe, everything about the EU, everything about, you know, being a part of the collection of the European Union is not about the individual. It's all about the collective. So I don't understand what she's talking about. Yes, you have got liberal institutions within those collectives, but a lot of times those liberal institutions, they also go along with because they want to be woke. They're the social justice warriors. They're the virtue signalers. They're the people, the institutions, the corporations, the institutions that go along with the state and the collective and clamp down on the individuals. And that's what happens. Look at the whole thing with the transgender movement. Look at the whole thing um, uh, with you know going against Brexit. Look at what happened here in the United States of America with all the things that were happening also with... Um, you know, the LGBTQ movement, the transgender movement, uh, you know, you could just go with the CRT, all of these things, and look at the woke corporations that are siding on, on, on the side of these liberal institutions, these woke institutions. That's what's happening here, folks. Anyways, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, like, share, and follow us. Let us know what you think. This was part six of the debate between Douglas Murray and Flavia 
a Kleiner. There's a ton more parts here. Check them out on our channel. I'll leave you with my final thought, which is when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. We'll see you again next time, folks. Take care and stay safe.